statement or do you have questions? We'll go right to questions. your third crosstown shootout uh has your view of the rivalry changed at all in in three years i mean i'm sure you, you knew what it was when you got here but now that you've experienced it a couple times what's your thoughts yeah probably like a lot like the players right you uh you have an understanding of you know that it's a big game it, it means a lot to the community it means a lot to both fan bases and both programs, so you understand that because you've heard about it, but once you've experienced it, you have a little deeper understanding of it. Um, so probably a lot like, you know, guys that have been in the program for two, three, four years are going to have a, you know, more of an understanding of what it is because they've experienced it, and then guys that are first-year players. How much do you lean on the returning guys to let the younger guys or the new guys, whatever, you know, the transfers or whatever, know kind of what this is about? Yeah, I, th I think, <clears throat> you know, I think it's a couple things. Like I've, I've always said, you know, I'm not going to be shy about it. You, you, we all, as kids and competitors, dream about playing in big games. So, you know, I, there's no coach speak here. You dream about playing in big games, and this is a big game because it means a lot and two great programs, and it's a there's a history to it. And so, that's pretty neat. But how you go about approaching big games is the same stuff you do every day. And I think when you get away from that, you get into a little bit of trouble. So, you know, the approach should be the same. Uh, will there be a little bit extra energy or excitement? Uh, it'll be that way for both teams, both fan bases. I mean, that's that's to be expected. Uh, but we just got to be about business as usual. I don't think we have to do anything different or act different or prepare differently. Um, I, I think the guys know that there'll be some heightened energy uh, around town. And there'll be some national attention, certainly a lot of local attention. And we just got to double down on the things that we do every day in our preparation. So it shouldn't, there shouldn't be a lot to talk about. There shouldn't be a lot to prepare for that's any different than a normal game. But it'd be silly not to recognize that there's a lot more energy around this one. Keegan Scott, you're obviously a part of one of the better rivalries in all of college sports. How does this crosstown shootout and all the pop and circumstance kind of compare to North Carolina and Duke? Yeah, it's a question I get every year, you know, um, and I, I think I actually get this privately a lot. You know, people always want to say, hey, well, how's it compared to the Duke Carolina game? You know, trying to compare either one of them is unfair to the other because they're different. Um, but what I will say is the intensity of this game is just so unique. I, I, I honestly haven't experienced anything that I can relate to that intensity this time in the year. You know, early game that every year has a certain level of intensity. I can't relate anything to that. Um, and that's cool, right? And then both programs, regardless of the outcome of the game, will be more prepared for what comes next because of that. Um, but, you know, comparing it to the – it's, it's just not fair either way. And I have such great respect for both rivalries and both games. The main players have changed since – last year uh, what do you see of them and uh, what, you know obviously you're not going to give me your whole scouting report but uh, they, they've, right. played, they've played some pretty <laughs> you know they've played Houston they've played Purdue they've played some tough people and they're four and four I think going into t tonight yeah I, I just have a, a, a listen guys I have a great respect for Sean Miller um, I have a great respect for their players and their team um it's it that's it presents challenges it's it's our first really high ma it's our first high major game on the road you know in a hostile environment i mean there's a lot of challenges uh, for us we got to continue to grow continue to work and prepare and i think we got guys that want those types of challenges but uh, listen there's a lot of respect they're a really good basketball team they've been tested already this year they have a great coach um so again, all the, the pomp and circumstance around the game and all the excitement in the community, I love that. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and downplay. That's great. But when it comes to what really just happens day to day, you know, it's the same as always, guys. That's, that's the truth. Everybody goes, well, coaches try to spin it. No, I mean, the pomp, circumstance, the excitement, the energy, heck yeah, we all want that, man. We're competitors. And I'm, I'm sure that they feel the same way over at Xavier. You know, our players will be excited. Their players will be excited. But 
when it comes to what this is about, it's about going in the gym. It's the same thing I'd say every week going into every game. It's about going in the gym and trying to get better one day at a time, one drill at a time. And then whatever happens when the game is over, do we want to win it? Heck yeah, but should we want to win against Gulf Coast? And when the game's over, we're going to go respond the next day the way we respond, win or lose. We're going to work hard and get better. And we're going to keep it going. So I'm not trying to downplay that this is awesome. I, I love that we get to play these big rivalry games. It's one of the reasons you want to come to Cincinnati as a player, as a coach, to be a part of cool stuff like this. But we're not going to make something out of it that it's not either. You know, it's just another basketball game in terms of preparation, in terms of how we're going to prepare for it. Coach, looking back at the Howard game, how important was it for, for your team to face some adversity prior to going into a uh, star environment on Saturday? I mean, I just think anything you experience early in the year or anything you experience any time in the year, you, you got to figure out what you can, how you can learn from it, how you can grow from it. So everything we've done, I'm not being coy with you guys, just everything we've done this year is a chance to learn and grow, and Howard was, was the same. And that's the first time I've been on the road, so it was a chance for us to to try to figure out who we are when we're not here at home in fifth third. Desmond Claude is kind of their they're really their only guy returning from a year ago. Uh, I don't know how much tape you've gotten into yet, but what do you see in his game that's grown, that's maybe uh, improved, and, and they're obviously leaning on him a lot more this year. He's a terrific player. Um, you know, a couple things you, you see that maturity from freshman to sophomore year. You know, you could see all the gifts last year. Um, but you see, and you saw the spurts, right? I think everybody saw that. When you watch tape now, you just see that it's more consistent. He's in a bigger role. You know, some guys leave the program, so he steps into a bigger role, more consistent role. Uh, but he's a big-time wing player, as good of a wing player as we have in college basketball. CJ, CJ Frederick talked about this rivalry after the game over the weekend and how he embraced this rivalry, obviously being a Cincinnati native. How important is it to have a guy from this area to really embrace on these younger guys, talking about this rivalry and all the aspects heading into this one? Yeah, again, I, we have guys that have played in the game. CJ grew up attending the game and following the game. It's going to mean a lot to both, both teams, both players. I, to speculate the levels of that, I don't know. I'm spending my time and energy on preparing. Uh, and, and obviously our preparation really starts in a couple of days. What we're doing today is what we'd normally do. If we had a week off, we're going to try to have a really good practice and get better. Quincy Oliveri was kind of an underrated guy. He's their second leading scorer, just under 14 points a game. How have you seen him kind of fit into this Xavier offense in his first year with the team? Underrated. If you go look at his recruiting last spring, he, he, was one of those highest, he was one of the highest recruited players in the transfer portal. You know, a great, great player at Rice. I think he came from Rice, right? He's a great player at Rice that was one of the highest scorers in the transfer portal, one of the best three-point shooters in the transfer portal. So I don't know I don't know what you mean by underrated. Maybe I, under the radar. Under the radar? Yeah, yeah, yeah I was going to say underrated. He's a <laughs> damn good player in Conference USA last year, one of the best. I think, was he all league? I mean, I to, yeah, I, yeah, I, mean uh, he, he, I wouldn't call him underrated, yeah. but I'd, I'd say that maybe being in Conference USA and at Rice, maybe on the national radar, maybe that's what you're referring mm -hmm. to. Um, uh, he's a really good player, old, experienced. You know, he shoots the heck out of it, and then he can do a lot more than just shoot the basketball. You spent some time recruiting a couple guys on their roster. Uh, does that help at all when you get into this, that, that you have some familiarity uh, with, with a couple guys that are playing key roles for them? Yeah, I don't know. I, maybe. I don't know. I, I think maybe when you start the scouting report, it's a little different than when you play a game where you – you're learning those players for the first time. Maybe the learning curve for the coaching staff's a little quicker. I, I don't know. I've never thought deeply about it, but uh, but yeah, we, we're aware of a lot of these guys. We tried to recruit a lot of their guys. Um, I have a lot of respect for a lot of their players and some of the ones that I got to know in the recruiting process. They're great kids. Uh, so yeah, that, there's a familiarity that is probably different when you play other high major schools because there's only so many high level players in recruiting. You know that. So you, generally when you're playing other high major schools, you're familiar with the players because you cross pass and recruiting. That's not unique to the Xavier game. That would be probably almost any high major game you play. Is there any change in CMOS, the coach's status, heading into practice today? I, I, I don't know. You know, well, I, I, we were 
we were on the court yesterday, but it was more of like an active recovery day. And because of what he's dealing with, we just we didn't even try to get him going. We gave him the day off um, uh, uh, with a couple other guys. We got a lot of work done in film, and they got to lift with Coach Ray Felt. And some of the guys got out and got some work done, and some of the guys we gave the day off to. So uh, we didn't get to test him yesterday. So I, I imagine we got the best trainer I've ever been around. I mean, he's he's incredible, Bob Mangin, and. Generally, with this kind of stuff, guys, I'm pretty spoiled as a coach because I don't have to worry a lot about it. Bob will tell me what the deal is when we start practice today. He'll give me another report at the end of practice, and we'll kind of take it from there. Scott, then Joe. Football tends to, uh, for big games, they'll pipe in noise. They'll do a bunch of stuff. They'll play theme songs. Is that anything that ever happens in, in basketball to uh, try to recreate Centosh Center? You, you bring in a section of kids to cuss at you, anything like that? <laughs> Uh, I don't know what happens in college basketball at other places. I can only speak to what we do, but no, we don't, there's no there's no tricks. There's there's no tricks. Uh, we know it'll be a loud environment. I've experienced it once before. Um, for this game, it's it, it's as loud of environment as I've played in, and I felt the same way here at Fifth Third last year. I mean, when this game, you got two two arenas that have great support night in night out, and then this game it gets heightened. So I've only been to a game there when we played there. It's the only time I've been in there for a Xavier game. And it was as loud as any environment I've played in. Uh, I, there's no tricks to prepare for that. But the stuff you do every day, you, you're trying to prepare for, you know, being in hostile environments. And by the way, this won't be the only hostile environment we're in this year. I mean, look ahead at our schedule. Look at the league we're playing in. Um, so that's that's been something we've emphasized from the summer is just preparing for – being in environments on the road, but this will just be the first time we've actually experienced it. To follow up on that, Wes, how difficult is it just fundamentally to win a road rivalry game? I I, I don't know. I I don't, I don't I don't know how to answer that question. To be completely honest, I, I I think you know anytime you play against great teams anywhere, you can play them in the playground play against great teams that are well coached you, you, you got to rely on the things that you do every day you got to rely on the habits that you build every day you don't win or lose games the day the game's played you know you win or lose games by the work you do day in and day out so I, again I love the energy behind this game I'm, I'm not I'm never I've told y'all I'm never going to shy away from that but it's not like this week determines who wins the game right like the, and, and sometimes things happen in games that you can't control, but it's the stuff you do every single day to prepare to be in big games. And this will be one of a ton of big games that we're in this year at Cincinnati. You've had a, Aziz in the rotation now for a couple of games. How have you seen him working with, you know, Big and Odie, especially in the front court together? And are you seeing other teams adjust to having a, a player like him added to your, your team? Yeah, you know, I, I, I think I said this after our last game, Justin. I, it, it, these are the great problems, right? And I mean, this is a this is a champagne problem. This is the kind of problem you want as a coach. But you add a guy like Aziz, who's a you know major impact player, into a team after four games have already been played and two, you know, games that didn't count in the preseason. So six competitions against different opponents. And when you're going through the preseason, those competitions, you're going through the first couple games of the year especially with all the new faces we have, you're trying to figure things out, right? You're trying to figure out your rotations. You're trying to figure out your best lineups. You're trying to figure out the things to do or adjust offensively and defensively with those rotations and that those best. We're trying to find our rhythm as a team. You know, I think everybody can understand that, especially with all these new faces. You throw Aziz into the mix, who's a major impact player, who's extremely different than our other players. Right, it's almost like you're starting that process over again in certain ways, and I like that problem. I'm not. This is not a coach complaining, but what I'm trying to say is it's going to take us a little bit of time because it's going to take us a time to figure out how he best fits into all this, how we best utilize his strengths, and then that has a collective effect on everybody else too. How does that impact the other guys on the floor? How does it impact their strengths and? You know, again, when you do that with a player at his stature, 
you know, after you've already played six competitions, it does take a little time. We'll, we'll, know, we'll know a lot more about the best ways for this team to, to play and interact in January. Um, doesn't mean we can't have success between now and then, but it is going to take a little bit of a time, and I think we all have to have a little patience, coaches, players, everybody in between. Jim Bork, you get a shot. You've had seven games with Coach Loeffler on your bench now. What's it kind of been like seeing how he manages the games and that addition with the head coaching background? How Coach Loeffler manages the game? Yeah. Well, he doesn't not manage the game. Just the addition <laughs> to the bench. <laughs> um, no, he, it's – our staff uh, is – has been um, it, it's 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 worked really well together so far. Uh, this this is this staff has functioned at a much higher level, and that has nothing to do with pieces in the past. It's we it's like any team that's functioned at a high level. The continuity from years past has helped that more than anything. So is Coach Leffler uh, seemed to fit in well and find a good role? Yes. But I think the reason the staff is functioning so well has a lot more to do with Coach Dollar and Coach Morgan and Coach Thielen, you know, and Matt Miller. And, and I can you know, go down the line here and our graduate, two of our three graduate assistants returning. So there's continuity on our staff. So it's easy to, easier to plug in a new face. And then Josh has done a really nice job of kind of finding his role within the staff at the same time. The big story of these games recently has been Xavier getting up big early and then kind of being able to hold off. Is there anything you do to kind of get your team ready for that initial surge, <laughs> that first four to six minutes where, especially in their gym, it's going to be? Yeah, I, you know, like, again, I love I love all the interest in trying to break down every aspect of it. Again, That's I'm, my I'm, job. I'm, 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 I know I love it. I mean, <laughs> keep doing it. But I don't have any great answers here. No, I haven't, like, gone back and looked at – recent trends in the game like I'm not going to like we're, we're gonna prepare for this game the way we prepare for all of them and we always try to win the first four minutes we're gonna sit we're gonna sit in every time out this year and talk about a four minute game and I believe there's 10 of them over the course of the game is my math pretty good there I'm no math guy okay correct there's 10 of them so we're gonna talk about all 10 of those four minute games it won't be any different for this one than it was for Florida Gulf Coast on Sunday yeah, thanks. Thanks, guys.